in a moment in time in which technology has such a vast impact globally, it's really critical that we find ways of kind of breaking that monoculture and finding ways that artists can play a role in the earlier stage of the development of technology can give rise to new technologies. Hello, my name is Ben Vickers. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of the Serpentine Galleries in London and also the co-director of Ignota Books. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking Daehung and the team for inviting me to be a part of this. I'm very sad not to be in Korea at this time. Uh, to start, uh, there were a series of questions that were posed to us about what a kind of post-pandemic art world might look like. Um, I guess it's a question as to whether we're going to enter a post-pandemic art world. I'm not going to address specifically any one of those questions, but rather I'm going to speak to the kind of broader implication of technology's impact on the arts and the role that artists can play in the reformation of technologies in this moment. And then to zone in on a specific set of technologies that I think are going to give rise to some kind of monumental shifts over the next decade. So just to give a little bit of context, at the Serpentine in London, over the course of the last six years, I've been responsible for kind of shaping the technological strategy of the institution and thinking through what its implications would be over a long period of time. And within that, I've worked with a number of artists, architects, designers, in order to create new types of experiences that utilize advanced technologies. Examples of this are things like Zaha Hadid's VR experiences where we took paintings of buildings that had never been rendered as actual buildings and created a VR experience where you could experience these things as sort of 3D environments. We've worked with artists like Ian Cheng to develop artificial life in an exhibition in 2018. We worked with Ian to create an artificial life called Bob, which stood for Bag of Beliefs. And this was a being that inhabited the gallery over the course of the exhibition and would evolve based on the way that visitors interacted with it. We also, uh, in 2019, worked with the artist uh, Jakob Kustinsen to create an augmented reality experience across Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens where you could develop a closer relationship with specific species in the park, um, particularly through listening. Uh, this was followed by a project with Jakob called Catharsis that was part of the Connect BTS initiative where he simulated an old growth forest that was then set within the, the landscape of Hyde Park and was also streamed online for people to experience. Um, before I begin to talk more specifically about the, the types of technology I think are going to have a major impact on the arts, I think it's worth talking about the sort of underlying strategy and, and ideas of how technology develops that have informed my work. Um, technology doesn't ever develop, no individual technology really develops in isolation. Uh, at any one time you have a set of technologies that are really entering a state of maturity. And an example for this framework would be to take say social media, video, mild, mobile apps and 3G. What's important is the moment in which these technologies converge because it's that moment of convergence that new things are created. So with the advent of those individual technologies, one would not necessarily be able to envision that they would lead to the creation of things like Airbnb, YouTube, uh, Tumblr, etc. What's interesting is if you take this framework and apply it to the present moment, you see that there's a set of increasingly advanced technologies that are entering kind of everyday life, virtual reality, augmented reality, robotics, drones, blockchain, artificial intelligence. Now, we're not really at a point where we necessarily understand what the implications will be of the convergence of these technologies, but it's really at that point that completely unexpected things can emerge. And in the background, we also have things like cheap aerospace, CRISPR, uh, quantum computing, artificial general intelligence, all being created in this moment. And to try and imagine what that would mean or what types of things it will produce is really kind of unknowable. Now, how does this relate to art? 
So one of the kind of key models that has informed the strategy that I've utilized within the institution is what's called uh, Gartner's hype cycle. Now you can see here that the hype cycle, you have expectations running along the x-axis and time running along the y-axis. And you can see that you have this kind of innovation trigger moment where something new emerges. It hits like a, a peak of it expected in inflated expectation and then as a result of that hype meets kind of the trough of disillusionment where everybody loses faith in the potential that was expressed or the stories that were told about that technology and then over time you find it integrates into society you have the plateau of productivity and it just becomes kind of part of everyday life the reason why this is important is because for the most part, historically, museums, institutions and for a for large part artists work with technologies at the point at which they've kind of plateaued. And what this means is that most of the critical decisions about what that technology can be have already been made. And in a moment in time in which technology has such a vast impact globally, it's really critical that we find ways of kind of breaking that monoculture and finding ways that artists can play a role in the earlier stage of the development of technology can give rise to new technologies. And I think the thing that's really important to underscore here is the idea of narrative formation. Uh, that technology is more than its components parts, really its context and its story shape what it is and what it can do and individual technologies can be radically reshaped by the stories that we tell through them. Now, in July of this year, we launched a kind of consolidated report with the strategy agency Rival Strategy called Future Art Ecosystems, Art and Advanced Technology. And this was due to launch uh, at the moment of lockdown. Uh, we postponed to July, and in many ways, we, I think we were happy that we did because what it showed was the things that we kind of predicted to happen on a longer term had really intensified. And for the purpose of this video, um, I just want to share three of those kind of key findings that I think have really big kind of implications and uh, impacts for what is going to emerge at least over the next decade. So one was that the def what we found was the definition of the artist is being transformed more towards a kind of team-based creativity, uh, what others have referred to as kind of squats. Um, two, ecosystems and business models outside of the traditional art world have the potential to eclipse its current role. And there's a kind of need to really learn from outside of the art world the types of organizational form that can address the current moment. And three, that big tech innovation will have transformative impact on the art over the next decade. Um, whilst that has been true, it has happened as a result of kind of osmosis over the last couple of decades. And there hasn't necessarily been a direct intervention in culture on the part of big tech. Something that we found is that that is really beginning to change. Now, I would like to just zone in on one specific set of technologies and concepts uh, that I feel will be most significant in the, in the years to come and are already beginning to be demonstrated in this moment. And using the framework before, that is video games engines, that is the technology used to produce video games, augmented reality combined with 5G, the concept of the metaverse that was originally coined by Neil Stevenson in Snow Crash in 1991, and the idea of the experiential economy. Now, we've already seen examples of this beginning to emerge. Things like Team Lab's Borderless Museum in Tokyo, uh, the Getty Institute releasing their art collection in Animal Crossing as downloadable content to display on your island, and most recently Manchester International Festival creating this future institution called The Factory that will be based in Manchester in the UK as a site inside Fortnite, and which has currently had over a, a million uh, people turn up. Now, to kind of frame like what is the metaverse, the metaverse is a contentious term at this moment in time, um, but there's certainly a number of companies and individuals that are advocating for it to take a particular form. But I think most people would agree that it's a kind of persistent uh, virtual space that either overlays our environment uh, through augmented reality, or it is a kind of other non-space that you can access through things like Fortnite. Now, the key qualities of the metaverse 
are that it's participative and open, uh, persistent, it's 24-7, it moves beyond the concept of gaming, it has fully integrated economies with digital currency, it is likely to be hardware agnostic in order to grow and expand in size, and it, ex it often will extend beyond screens to AR layers in the physical world. Now, to kind of close, if the metaverse is to have a, an impact on the art world and to be, really to become a place of culture, uh, I'd like to state a few observations that I think will be important to think through the art world's engagement in this space, if it is to have one. So one, I believe that arts organisational models will need to change. Two, that audiences will become transnational by default and not so located in a specific geography. Uh, younger audiences will define the majority of these changes. Many traditional institutions will be displaced as a result of these new types of experience, these new types of production, because the time in which they will have to adapt will be somewhat limited, um, or they will just kind of double down on the, on the kind of core offer of museums as a, a kind of quiet space of contemplation with objects. Uh, tech companies will increasingly shape culture, um, the market for digital art will increase as a result of these integrated economies and perhaps most significantly there will be a kind of reckoning where the, the history of video games will really be recognised as an art form in and of itself. So that's what I'd like to contribute to this conversation. Um, thank you so much for inviting me.